when things pop up and you are not ready for it, you're surprised out of the blue, you in the car, you driving along with music playing, you just uh, and all of a sudden you go from this to like, wait, hold up, hold up. What's happening? Y'all know, I don't know if y'all do it, but I turn the radio off and everything. I'm like, pew, 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 turn the music off. I'm like, pew, pew. oh, snap. Pew, pew. Oh, snap. Exit, exit, please. Give me an exit, please. Oh, my God. What is going on? That's one of those emergencies that you did not know was about to occur. Okay? And you know when those happen, they always happen to catch you when your pocket's slipping. Tell the truth. Be honest. Uh, shame all the devils. Okay. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do here on Deidre Michelle. On one day last week, I posted inside of the community tab on my channel a post that had questions and answers. And in that post, it said that if you had any questions that you wanted to ask me, feel free to do so. But it was originally supposed to be about me and I will answer all questions. Well, apparently everyone who saw it, because I know a lot of people didn't because I did not follow the rule of thumb and post when I should have. And I posted it way outside of an hour. But anyway... Those who did see it, they sent me questions, and the questions were not about me, but about the business itself and different things that are pertaining to the things that we do on this channel. And I said, hmm, you know what? Boo-hoo, they don't want to get to know me. That's okay, though. They don't have to, because what's going to happen is, instead, every week, I am going to post the same post inside of the community tab to give you guys an opportunity to ask me these questions and I will do the best I can to answer all of them regardless of what they are and I will post them up on Sunday afternoons. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Anywho, let's get down to it. They're not going to go in any particular order, okay? And that's because I have one that was kind of along and had a couple of questions inside of one and so i decided i would answer that one last so that i can break it down a little easy and so that hopefully you can understand okay but without further ado let's start with question number one okay this question is from that lady dre that's so cute that lady dre <laughs> i like that okay at that lady dre if you are an independent contractor, is there any benefit to using an EIN number instead of your social security to apply for work? And also, how did you first learn about field inspections? Okay, so let's break this down. It's going to be real quick and simple, okay? I can say for a fact that most companies want you to use an EIN number because they want to know that they're doing business with someone who is actually running a business. They don't want to feel like that they are signing up someone who's probably going to quit at the drop of a dime if they get frustrated. You know if you're running a business, you're not going to do that too quick because that's your bread and butter. And the EIN, Employee Identification Number, pretty much says that you are all about your business. Oh, you know what? I can't read these people's minds. I don't know. But that's what makes sense to me. So now, as far as the benefit that it's going to give you for using your EIN number, of course, it's going to make you feel like you are on the path of running and operating a legitimate business. But at the same time, it keeps your Social Security number private. Okay, a lot of people have an issue with signing up for all of these different companies and taking a chance at all of these different companies. And you don't know if you're going to make it with these companies or not. You don't know if they're legit. You don't know what is actually going on with this company. And what you do, <laughs> you give them your social security number. And then soon as you decide, you realize that they trash or it seems like a scam, <laughs> too late, you don't already gave your number. As a matter of fact, I need to practice what I preach and stop giving minds out. And let me tell you something, being a part of identity theft, I have been there on more than one occasion. It ain't had nothing to do with the social security card. One time it was at a store where someone had actually took my card when I paid for my food. You know how they take your card and walk away from the table with your card? Hmm. 
And the next day, they was on line shopping and spending up all kind of money. And bringing back bad memories. We're going to let this go. Let this go. Okay? But I know for a fact, it is nothing to play with when people have your information. So, it's probably in all of our best interest if we do start using our EIN number. So, I know that most definitely between now and before the end of the year, I will be using the EIN number more fluently like as I should be. I'm going to call all the companies that I'm already working for now. And I'm going to change all of this stuff out because you're right. It is the best thing. Next question. How did I first learn about field inspections? Okay, that goes back to loan signing for all of us and all of you who've done that. And we went and get, we got all of our paperwork, you know what I'm saying? We got our certifications, we went and did all of these different things, you know. We all at the Secretary of State, we ready to do our notary work and loan signing. And then we realized, poof, <laughs> that work ain't coming like how we thought it was. So what are we going to do now? What? can we do? Huh. We got to find something else to step in and take the place of what's going on because I wasn't going to just sit down, you know, lay, lay down and roll over on it. I had to figure something out. I got on the internet and there it was. It was right there on the internet. And then I seen someone had a video and they was talking about all the different jobs that you could do pertaining to that up under the umbrella of loan signing which i come to find out later through deep research that it's really not because you don't have to be a loan signer in order to do field inspection but that's how i came to learn about it so i started doing some deep diving and some deep researching uh, and uh yeah decided to get my feet wet and here we are okay next question swg8860 at SWG8860. Hi. Is Richard Law still active within the organization? I've recently reached out to him via email, text, phone call, but to no avail. Well, I can say, first off, let me just tell y'all that uh, I don't know Richard like that, okay? <laughs> okay. But I can, you know, all jokes aside, I can tell you, yeah, he's still a part of the organization. He is pretty much the organization. And as to say why he didn't respond when you tried to reach out to him, I don't know. Maybe he was sick. Maybe he was out of town. Maybe it was over the weekend. And was it over the weekend? And he just don't respond because some people just don't respond no matter what over the weekend. I don't know. Have you purchased a book or something from him? Or are you just a random looking and reaching out to him? Because I don't know. I honestly cannot tell you that answer. But I do know for a fact that, yeah, he is still a part of the organization. Uh, see how easy that was? I hope I'm answering these questions uh, to you guys' satisfaction. Because that's the best I could do with that one. I have no other idea. But I do know that he's a part of the organization because, uh, yeah, he's around. He's floating around here. He's still here. Okay, next question. Domino3023 at Domino3023. Hey. How do you handle what I call the log jam? That one week where the company sends 20 out of the areas, one company sends a couple rushes, deadline, deadline, deadlines. Oh my goodness. How are we handling these companies when they send you all of this stuff out for one week? Okay. Well, I can tell you for a fact what I do. If I get a company and they send me 20 of them and they're all out of the area. And you already know that out of those 20, at least 15 of them are going to be apartments. So now you have to be strategic with your planning so that you're not running back and forth into this area all the time. If I get 20, 30, and I get this all the time, so you know, listen carefully, write it down, get a pen and paper, because I'm finna tell you some tricks. I, if, it's, if I get it like on a Tuesday or whatever, and I know that they're out of my area, and I know that I'm gonna have to make all of these calls, I am going to immediately go into my appointment book and I am going to designate at least two, starting off, but at least two to three days 
on the next week to go into that area. And the reason why I designate those many days is because we can't go every day and we also need to plan, right? So I'm going to start making calls at the but at the first free chance I get, I'm going to start making calls to these people. Some of them are going to immediately make appointments. And you know, you got some of them that you're going to have to chase. So let's say if you get it on, on a Tuesday, I'm keep throwing that Tuesday out because I want you guys to understand how I strategize with this type of stuff. So if I do it on Tuesday and I call and let's say about the, the first two or three, I've had to leave a voicemail. They didn't answer. And then when I get to that fourth one, this person, this nice, lovely person answers the phone. And they say, sure, you want to come one day this week? Ooh, well, I wasn't thinking about that. But since you said it, how about Thursday? Because remember, I'm trying my best to keep my Fridays open. So I'll say, would you, would you like to do it Thursday? And they're like, sure. If I have an opening starting, and it's way out of the area now. If my Thursday already have appointments in it but it has openings after the noon, like there's not too much going on down there, then I'll give them a day, a time afternoon, let's say one o'clock. So once I put them in there for one o'clock, so now I'm gonna take away one of those days for next week. So I'm gonna keep calling these people. And when I finish, every one by that time, they're gonna either have been loaded down below her on Thursday, or if I designated Monday and Tuesday of next week, they're going to be on Monday or Tuesday of next week. There's not going to be, well, uh, I don't, that don't work for me. We're going to have to do Thursday. We're going to have to do Friday of next week. That's not going to work. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Because you know what? No, well, I'm sorry, but unfortunately... My company is only sending me in that area on two days of next week or Thursday of this week. So you have three options. Do you need me to give you some time to decide what time you need? <laughs> That's how you do that. And you want to know why? Because they have time. They have time if they get off work in the evening. And a lot of them out of the areas, a lot of people not even working. And they have people who are at home. Look, they be playing a game. So you got to figure out how to just work that thing out. And, and that's how I'm most definitely going to make sure that I have everybody intact on what day and what time I want to see them out of the area. And I'm only going to do those two or three days and that is it. Two or three days and that is it. And I know I'm going to be required to at least do that many because everybody, you're not going to get them on the first one or two days. And that's how I handle it. And as far as the rushes go, most of the time, if they send you a file and it has that red rush next to it, that means that they've already had it for a while. It may be 30 days, 45, 50 days old. Either they had it and had nobody who could go do it, or they have already previously given it to someone and that someone didn't get it done. And now they've passed the ball to you. Okay. This ain't that ball game. This ain't the game we're playing here. You're not going to run up and down the court, bouncing the ball, sweating all the way up to the last 10 seconds, and then lose your cool and decide to throw the ball to me, and everybody's going to be looking at me crazy <laughs> if I miss the net. Okay? No. We're not playing that game. So what happens is when I get something that's rushed, I do do the same as I do with the rest. I immediately call them and try to set up an appointment. But if I can't get these people on the phone, you just can't get them. Hey, what can you do? Uh, you're not a magician. <laughs> Next question. What kind of appointment? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me call the name. At Tamzik. T-A-M-Z-I-G. Tamzik. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Tamzik. Hi. What kind of appointment calendar do you use? Paper or electronic? I remember you saying that you are originally from Mississippi. I'm from Lower Alabama and in a more rural area. Also, how do you budget for your business? I'm thinking I need to budget for taxes, office supplies, electronics, shipping, vehicle gas, and maintenance, memberships, subscriptions, and professional development. Can you think of anything that I'm missing? 
Well, Tamsi, you said a mouthful. So let's see, can we break this down, shall we? First off, what kind of appointment calendar do you use? Now, if you follow me from the beginning, you know that I use paper calendar. Last year, I had a book. You see it? It said 2023 calendar. And I used this book to make my appointments and do everything I need to do last year. When the year rolled around, I now use this one. And you'll see me pull it up a lot on my videos. I use this one, which is the 2024 planner. And the reason why I use it, and I'm going to show you an empty space in the back. If you guys can see it. You see in the back of the book there, you probably can see, you see how big that space is for each day? And then right beside it, you got all of those areas where you can actually write different things on the side. So I use this as my calendar for my planner. And I set all of my appointments using this book. I don't do digital uh, appointments. I like to fill my paper. I like to flip, 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 see it there. I'm one of those people. But I also read books and some people don't read. But you know, <laughs> that's another song and dance. But this is what I use. Okay. Next thing is, yep, yeah, I am from Mississippi. <laughs> cricket letter, cricket letter, hump back, hump back. Ah. And me too. I came from a rural area. I was in the rural area as well. So uh, <laughs> we Mississippi sisters, we sure are. How do I budget for my business? Because you are thinking of budgeting for taxes. Supplies, electronics. Okay, we got to break this down just a little bit, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so as far as budgeting uh, for my taxes, I don't know how you do it, but I don't let the taxes pretty much bother me too much. And you want to know why? Because I don't run around spending too much. I don't do, and not because I feel I don't, I don't, I can't. It's just that I just don't. I just don't. As uh, long as I have what I need, I have what I need. So when it gets time to pay my taxes, I just pay them, okay? I have to. But you know what I do? I wait until they uh, damn near make me. <laughs> and then I just pay them, okay? Because at the end of the day, they're going to get me anyway. I haven't received taxes in years. Years. So I don't even, I try not to let that bother me, okay? Because that right there will send you to, into stress, cardiac arrest, every year so we're gonna go ahead on office supplies now i don't budget for my office supplies either i bet you like this girl what you mean you don't budget okay i'm gonna explain to you i really do not budget for office supplies and i'm gonna tell you why because at one point i thought i was gonna have to when i thought i would be doing much much more loan signing but now that i see that the field inspection has taken over the ram and put the loan signing in the back seat I don't have to do all of that printing and so much of so much ink as I was at one point. As a matter of fact, as far as you're talking about subscriptions, I had that subscription with Brothers and the Brothers ink for my printer. And all of a sudden, I don't know what was happening, but it was like they was charging me 60, 70, 80. I was like, what is going on with this subscription? Come to find out the reason why they was doing it was because they said to me over the phone, uh -huh, listen to me now. <laughs> they had the nerve to tell me, well, this month, you printed more than what you used to do. And what difference does it matter? This is my printer. My printer, my electricity. I pay for the printer. I pay for the electricity. I pay for the paper. I pay for the ink. But apparently, they're trying to say that they give me the ink for free. That's what they're trying to say. They're trying to say they give me the ink for free. All I'm paying for is the subscription. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> Since y'all wants to play that little old game, huh, you can keep your subscription. And I made sure I detached all my stuff. What made me do it and what made me go ahead on and call them and lose my temper? <laughs> One day I was printing. Well, I got the bill and I was like, I'm not going to use that no more, so I'm not even going to pay it. So they sent the thing that said, your bill didn't go through. I'm not going to pay it. All right. So I said, I'm not going to pay it. <laughs> I'm just not going to pay it. I'm not going to pay it. I'm not going to pay it. Y'all just talked myself into not paying it. You see, I'm doing it now. Okay. But then I went to print one day and my printer wouldn't work. 
and it said, go online and check your subscription. I was like, are they in control of my printer? Y'all know what? That's another song and dance. But I cancel all subscriptions, okay? And the only one I have now that I still need to let go of is the one that comes in every month. And it reminds me of just how less work I'm getting from loan signing through a uh, signing order, whichever one, or $2.99 to get all those extra uh, zip codes and stuff going on. You pay $2.99 a month. <laughs> $2.99 a month for what? Okay, let's move on. But yeah, I don't deal with that either. I'm cutting loose the subscriptions just like you are. Now, let's talk about the maintenance. Vehicle gas and maintenance. Okay, now, I don't know how many of you have carts for your vehicles, but uh, I do. And this is the uh, American Tire. You see it there? American Tire card right there. American Tire Depot. Uh, auto care experience. That's what this card is right here. I got this card from them because I knew that when things pop up and you are not ready for it, you're surprised out of the blue, you in the car, you driving along, music playing, you just, uh, and all of a sudden you go from this to like, wait, hold up, hold up. What's happening? Y'all know, I don't know if y'all do it, but I turn the radio off and everything. I'm like, pew, 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 turn the music off. I'm like, Oh snap! Oh snap! Exit, exit, please. Give me an exit, please. Oh my god. What is going on? That's one of those emergencies that you did not know was about to occur. Okay? And you know when those happen, they always happen to catch you when your pocket's slipping. Tell the truth. Be honest. Uh, shame all the devils. Okay? So I went one day and I went ahead to get something done on my car. And when I walked into the car place, and I'm telling you this because I'm pretty sure a lot of car places have these cards. So I walked in there to get my car fixed, and the dude asked me that I had a card. I said, no, so he went on ahead and do what they're doing. I was like, okay, so how do I get the card? He told me how to get the card. I went on ahead and signed up for the card, and they gave me the card. And the way it works is, is that you have anything that you pay for over $199. Anything over $199, it automatically gets uh, spread it out month, six months. What that means is that you have six months to pay it off without paying any interest, without doing anything, right? So, like I went and I bought uh, two new tires on the front of my car. Okay, I got two new tires on the front because I already had two new tires on the back. Don't ask me why I didn't do them all at one time. I just do Silly stuff like that sometimes. So I went and got two new tires on the front of my car not too long ago. I think about a month maybe. And I used the card. And since the, the tires were almost at a total of 400 bucks, they are spread it out for six months. Well, of course, I'm not going to let it go six months. And this card also, you can pump gas. Now, I try not to do that because you become you get a habit. And I did it before. And that habit ended up being with all this extra gas <laughs> money that added up on my car. And I was like, wow, I owe so much on my car. And I realized what I was doing. So now I make sure I keep dollars in my pocket. I do not use a card at the pump at all. I keep dollars in my pocket. And whenever I need gas, I put gas in my car that way. But because I'm so strategic in what I do and my planning when it comes to taking my routes and stuff, I don't pump all the time anyway. And my gas, my car is not a gas guzzler. So I hope that answered your questions too. Now, uh, shipping, I'm assuming that you do products, okay? Now, I, when I was shipping products on a regular basis, the only thing I was doing was most of my shipping products came from Amazon, and I kept all of the receipts. You know, in the back of Amazon, you know, you can go and you can uh, uh, click for your invoice, and then you can print your invoices out. I had tons of invoices showing all of my products and everything that I was buying for shipping and my shipping bags and you know and all of the little stuff that I had my paper cutter and all that stuff and I made sure that I had it for tax time even though it didn't really matter too much it didn't knock a dent in my taxes not enough for me to have them papers and I had a lot of paper but anyway yeah so that's how I handle all of that as far as my paper now I don't buy too much paper because uh, you know when you do field inspection, a lot of those forms that you have to get filled out from the uh, insurance, not the houses, but like if you're doing um, 
But I guess you could do houses too. I haven't started that as of yet, but I most definitely use it for construction. Majority of those paperwork, uh, depending on the the insurance company, the paperwork is all generic. And that means that every time you print, it's going to be pretty much the same papers. You print the same 16 sheets over and over and over. So what I do is now when I print it out, I just go and when I ask some questions, I use a pencil. You know what that means? Once I put all the information in the system, erase, erase, erase. And if I run across another one that requires the same questions from the same insurance agency, I use the same set of papers. Boom, there you go. Oh, that girl just threw you out some tricks. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I hope I answered these questions as best I could for you guys. I hope that I answered them to your satisfaction. Everyone who has questions from here on out, on Sundays, I'll try to post a new one for you guys to ask whatever questions you want to ask. And when you see it, you have through the week to answer the questions. And I'll try to make a video for the next following week to answer any questions that you got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank all of you who did jump in and ask me those questions. I much appreciate it because it made me think about some stuff as well too. Because y'all helping me just like I'm helping you. Like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day.